Wait, 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 wait. You thought it would be that simple. Well, you're wrong. That was just the easy part. Now we're going to look at hoppers. First, we wanted to know exactly how long it takes for an item to flow out of a hopper. To test this, we simply turn the input off while watching inside the hopper GUI to see when the item leaves. When unpowered by the lever, the repeater turns off at the exact same time that the item flows out of the hopper. Thus, it takes one game tick for the item to leave the hopper. When unpowered by a repeater, the item flows out of the hopper, and then, one game tick later, the repeater turns off. In this case, the repeater took two game ticks to turn off, as seen in Chapter 1, so the item still leaves the hopper after one game tick. This suggests that hoppers are synced transmitters, like pistons and redstone dust, and are immune to changes in timing due to synced or unsynced signals. Next, we needed to see whether it is a synced or unsynced input. If the hopper is a synced input, then the comparator will turn off after one game tick instead of its base delay of two game ticks. However, if the hopper is an unsynced input, then the comparator will turn off after two game ticks. If we add the time it takes for the item to leave the hopper, then the total delay from when the lever is depowered until the proper wool is depowered is two game ticks if the hopper is a synced input, three game takes if the hopper is an unsynced input. In the following simple test, the pistons retract at exactly the same time. Thus, we can conclude that the total time it takes for the purple wool to depower from when the green wool was depowered is two game takes, and thus the hopper is a synced input. Using this knowledge, we created the following detector. Normally when unpowered with a lever, the piston at the end will receive a pulse. However, when unpowered with a repeater, the piston at the end will not receive a pulse. This is because the hopper is a sync transmitter, and therefore the delay of the bottom line is always one redstone tick. However, the delay of the top line varies between one game tick with a lever input and two game ticks with a repeater input. Therefore, when the repeater turns off, after one game tick, the piston at the end receives a one game tick pulse. For this test, we will say that if the piston pulses, the test will return true. However, if the piston doesn't pulse, the test will return false. So, we cloned this setup into the gallery and got dug into testing. The results we got were, in general, pretty normal. Most of the inputs that give off a synced folding edge returned true, and all of the inputs that gave an unsynced folding edge returned false. However, there were some exceptions, and those exceptions can be seen in the table here. What is actually happening here? To further our understanding, let's look at one of these examples in detail. We will use the following test setup to show what is happening here. As we can see, the comparator and repeater turn off at exactly the same time. As we know from the table, when sand falls, the falling edge is a synced input. This means the repeater turns off after one game tick. If the repeater and the comparator turn off at exactly the same time, then the item must leave the hopper instantaneously, contrary to the game tick delay previously seen. So, to recap, on a synced or unsynced input, the item will leave the hopper after one game tick, and the comparator will turn off after another game tick. However, with these special cases, the item leaves the hopper instantaneously, and the comparator turns off after one game tick. One may think you are therefore able to create instantaneous hopper transport with falling sand and micro ticks. However, we found that this is not the case. There appears to be some sort of refresh time before the hopper can allow an incoming item to pass into the next inventory which is a bit like how you can only see or take a piston once every three game ticks. And that is the mysterious hopper glitch in a nutshell.
These results are the same for hoppers sucking items out of inventories like this. And the same is also true for the rising edge. Further research into this field suggests that hoppers give off synced signals on the rising edge and falling edge. The hopper glitch applies to all edges. And finally, the same results are found when hoppers are expected to suck up item entities. Chapter 3 Command blocks say what? At first, command blocks seems extremely simple. For example, in the following setup, when we use a lever input, the piston extends at the same time as the glass breaks. However, when using a repeater input, the piston extends and one game tick later the glass breaks. This implies that command blocks are unsynced transmitters, like redstone repeaters. However, upon further testing, we were extremely confused when we were presented with the following setup. Here, we have a redstone clock that adds 1 to the current scoreboard in the sidebar. The command block below the piston sets the score to 0. The second command block says the current score in chat. In this setup, therefore, we can test how long it will take for the piston to extend. When powering the following setup with a lever, Firstly, the command block will set the score to 0 ticks. Then the piston will extend for 3 ticks. Upon the piston landing in its final location, the score will be instantly set in chat, since the piston provides a sync signal. The output from this experiment should be 3 ticks, and when powering it with the lever, we can see that it is. But what about the repeater? When we power the command block with the repeater, first the command block should activate one game tick after the piston starts extending. Then two game ticks later, the second command block should activate instantaneously. This means that the command block will say 2. Though this is true in theory, it doesn't actually happen this way. But why? Well, what really happens is the command block powered by the repeater updates before the command block clock can increase the score by one tick. Ultimately, this means the clock will appear to start at one game tick, instead of zero, and it counts up from there. And of course, one tick plus two ticks equals three ticks. The real question is, is this true for all unsynced inputs? The answer is, no. Some inputs, like when a piston cuts a redstone source, will make the command block update after the clock. A full list of inputs that we found for this can be seen in the command block inputs after set block column of the spreadsheet. Ultimately, this shows that you have to be very selective about the types of inputs you use into a command block. Note, these inputs are likely different depending on which clock you use. For instance, in this example, we use a set block clock. However, these inputs most likely vary depending on whether you use a fill or clone clock. You'd be glad to hear that everything you have learnt, till now, conforms to our observations, and unless we miss something huge, it is also correct. Except for redstone pulses. Oh yeah. That. Very late in our research, we realized that perhaps it would be a good idea to analyze how short pulses affect the various components. Normally, extending a piston with a solid signal gives a synced result. When we pulse a piston with a 2, 1 or 0 game tick pulse, it actually gives an unsynced result. This, however, led to a full-on investigation about piston timings. In the following example, what do you expect to happen when we power the piston with a torch? Normally, we would assume that the piston takes three game ticks to extend. This signal is unsynced, as shown in the evidence we've seen previously. This would imply that the top line of repeaters will start turning on after 5 game ticks. The bottom line, however, 
will start to power after three game ticks. But what do we get in reality? In reality, the piston appears to extend in the same amount of time it took for the first repeater to turn on. This would imply it has only extended in one game tick. One might also conclude that the piston extends in two ticks with a synced output, however this would go against the evidence previously shown. We find a similar trait when we power the piston with a two game tick pose. But this time the piston appears to extend in two game ticks instead of one game tick. To further investigate this quirk with pistons, we built the following setup. Every piston in the top line extends after one game tick because they are receiving one game tick pulses. The game tick pulse is generated when the piston pushes the redstone block on top of a command block containing a set block to air command. Normally this would create a zero tick pulse, however since these pistons are pulsed they are giving an unsynced result. This delays the command blocks by one game tick which will in turn delete the redstone block and give the next piston a one game tick pulse. However, what happens in the bottom line? The first command block in the middle places a redstone block in the bottom line instantly since it receives a synced input from the redstone torch. Then the line of command blocks will move said redstone block forwards by one section every game tick. Ultimately from this test we can show that both top and bottom line travel at exactly the same rate as predicted by our experiments. One can also derive an experiment to show the two-tick nature of Pistons 2 with a very similar setup. For the previous two chapters we have said that Pistons are sync transmitters and are not affected by unsynced or synced signals. Prepare for your world to crumble before you. Just like the hopper, the piston may be dependent on unsynced and synced inputs. The reason is because of this. These two contraptions are identical, except one unpowers the back piston with an unsynced signal, and the other unpowers it with a synced signal. Interestingly, the back piston will only fire if powered with an unsynced signal. Even if you add over 500 extra microticks of delay, the outcome will still be the same. The back piston won't fire. But what are microticks? How do they work? What are zero ticks? These are all questions that will be answered in the next episode of XYZ. So, if you're still here, congratulations, you are also insane. We'll send a taxi over to you shortly. The Mental Institute won't believe any of your stories. <laughs> Jokes aside, what are our conclusions? The Input Bug in Short is a glitch that appeared in Minecraft version 1.5.1, the Redstone update. It affects the delays of certain components depending on what input methods you use. In general, our theory suggests the built-in delay of unsynced transmitters is reduced by one game tick when powered by a synced signal. Otherwise, if powered with an unsynced signal, the delay remains unchanged. Here is a list of unsynced transmitters which obey this rule. The built-in delay of sync transmitters are unchanged regardless of the input type. These are the sync transmitters in the game. Hoppers are an exception to the rule. They appear to be synced transmitters in most cases. However, in some special cases they will have zero ticks of delay when transferring or sucking items into or out of their inventory. These are the special cases in which the hopper behaves differently.
When using command blocks to measure the time it takes for certain things to happen, it is important to make sure you remember the different update times of certain input methods. The input methods that we found were different were as follows. However, these may not be the same depending both on the clock and perhaps even position. More testing is required in this area. When we pulse a piston with a 2, 1 or 0 game tick pulse, the pushed block will give an unsynced result on all edges. Additionally, a piston powered with a 0 tick pulse will fully extend in 0 ticks. A piston powered with a 1 tick pulse will fully extend in 1 tick. And a piston powered with a 2 tick pulse will fully extend in 2 ticks. However, Pistons powered with a 3 tick or more pulse will always fully extend in 3 ticks. Finally, pistons may or may not behave differently to unsynced and synced inputs. However, this is only noticeable in the microtick scale. There will be more about microticks in our next episode of XYZ. A spreadsheet of synced and unsynced inputs will be supplied in the description of this video. And as always, thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching.